All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweshai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, the honors of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us all this truth true well. And Shalom to the Akim and the Akwath out there listening and learning, increasing in the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweshai. Uh, I wanted to get into this, uh, you know, short video that I saw. There's a couple interesting ones, you know, and you can get a little bit of truth out of out of almost everything, you know, get a, a lesson out of it. But uh, it says the oldest person ever, you know, and uh, not really the oldest person ever, you know, but it is the oldest person recorded in modern times because we know, you know, some of our ancestors lived to be a thousand years old, 900, you know, 700, 500 years old, you know, but they count it all as uh, fairy tales. You know when it's concerning the scriptures but uh i wanted to get into this because you know people think if the oldest person alive you know they were they were eating better and you know food was more organic you know um so on and so forth when in reality all it is is the spirit and power of yahweh and without him all right you wouldn't even make it past 20. you know you wouldn't make it past 20. you wouldn't make it past birth you know, it all lies on the hands of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So let me play this clip real quick. And smoke a lot and didn't eat a bunch of well, this person ever. You probably think that that person lived an extremely healthy life, that they didn't drink a lot, didn't smoke a lot, and didn't eat a bunch of junk. But you'd be dead wrong. This woman outlived the second oldest person by a significant amount, even with a significantly more unhealthy lifestyle. Born in France in 1875, Jean Calvin. All right, and this, this woman, Jean, all right, outlived, you know, the second oldest person alive. And, uh, you know, it just it just goes to show it, it also goes into her history. You know, she was very unhealthy. All right. Very unhealthy. Uh, she smoked since she was 17 years old up until she was 100. And I think up until she was 117, you know, so 100 years smoking. Um, she also... Uh, was unhealthy in her eating her dieting she didn't you know eat healthy food uh, no exercise you know that type of stuff now it is important to exercise you know it is important to exercise it's important to eat good you know it's all part of you know especially the Levitical law you know it prevents you from smoking cigarettes and you know being excessive with with your drinking and you know eating unhealthy foods you know, and it also tells you in the scriptures, you know, what you should eat and, you know, the benefits it's going to bring from eating that. But, um, but it just goes to show, you know, it just goes to show that regardless of you eating well or not eating well, you know, which you should eat well, but, uh, regardless of it, the most high can still take you out. You know, you have this, uh, famous soccer player, I believe his name was, uh, let me see if I can find it. I believe his name was uh, Aldo. <clears throat> Aldo de Nigris, uh, which was a Mexican former soccer player. Um, he was super healthy, man. You know, people talk about how this man... All right, was so healthy um, and how well trained he was and he trained his body okay every single day you know to be the best he could be actually it was his brother um, let me see what was his brother's name I think it was Antonio might have been Antonio de Nigris he played in six countries. God, he died in uh, November 15, 2009, you know, and this guy was was extremely healthy. You know, he was uh, a pro soccer player, you know, and uh, he ended up dying at the age. What was it? It was 31. It says during his career, which was cut short at 31 by a fatal heart attack. He played in six countries, okay, professionally. 
also representing 12 clubs in nine years. You know, so he was a uh, he was an okay soccer player, you know, but he was very, very determined to uh, to be healthy, you know, and no matter how healthy he was, it says he was taken out short, you know, at 31 years of age, this man was taken out, you know, and then you have this woman that was unhealthy and lived to be, I believe her, her age was a hundred and um, like 130 or something like that. You know, something by that nature. But uh, the point is, Yahab Bashim Yahweh Shai is not a respecter of persons, man. You know, he's not going to look at you and say, oh, man, you deserve, you know, you deserve the world. You know, just because what? Because you're famous or because you're, you know, an Israelite. Most High is not going to have respect, you know, just for that and, and give you the world, you know, or give you long life, you know. There's some people that follow the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? And they didn't have 130 years, you know? They were cut short at 90, you know? But the Most High is the one that dictates all that, man. You know? It all belongs to Him. So regardless of your unhealthy eating, all right, or, or your, your status in, in your job or, or whatever the case is, man, you know, the Most High can take you out whenever He wants to, and He can keep you on this earth as long as He wants to. You know, so this is uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 6. It says, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be good, thou shalt be a good minister of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. Okay, so you have to have that. So look, you have to have that in this in this ministry that we carry. You know, this ministry that we have, you have to have that good doctrine. And that good doctrine doesn't mean it sounds good. That good doctrine means it is true. Okay? It says, whether unto thou hast attained, all right, this thing of ours that we've attained, you know, being a Hebrew Israelites and knowing the law, statutes, and commandments, knowing Yahweh, the name Yahweh, knowing Yahweh Shai and the name Yahweh Shai, you know, going out to the highways and byways knowing what the mark of the beast is, you know, all that goes into play, all right, all that goes into account of being a man of the Lord, you see, so it says, let me back up here real quick, it's a lot. a lot bear with me <clears throat> all right so it says uh first timothy 4 and verse 7 but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness you see exercise yourself unto godliness you know so like i said it's 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 good to have you know, bodily exercise and, and to uh, keep yourself healthy. All right, but the main thing is this ministry, man. You know, and if you're missing out on both, then you're missing out on everything, too. So it says uh, exercise, gymnasio, all right, which we know what the gym is for, to exercise. It says to exercise naked uh, in a, a palestra or school of athletics, to exercise vigorously in any way either the body or the mind you see so that exercise comes with practice the root word is properly okay metaphor naked open lay bare um, unclad without clothing the naked body uh, ill clad you know but we're to exercise our minds you know for a deeper understanding uh, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, but refuse profane and old wives' fables, right? Like saying, uh, um, what's it called? There's a, a 
el cucuy, <laughs> you know, and certain things of, of that nature, you know, that, that pertain to, you know, you got to knock on wood and if you hear something and, you know, you don't want it to come to pass, knock on wood or, you know, when you have an eyelash, you know, blow on it and a wish will come true or on a star, wish on a, a shooting star and your dream will come true and things of that nature, man, you know, things of that nature. There's also uh, things in the scriptures that people, you know, turn into an old wives fable, you know, which were to neglect, you know, we're supposed to stay away from, but that's what we're supposed to exercise our mind. So it says, um, exercise thyself rather unto godliness, okay, which is this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. You know, we read that in, uh, made mention of it earlier today at camp. You know, we read about it in, in uh, the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. You know, the, the, the faith you carry, okay, that is immortal. Okay, the body you have is not immortal. The body we all have, all right, from, from the top to the bottom, okay, the holiest man to the least, none of our bodies will inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's why our bodies have to be changed okay into perfect bodies those bodies will inherit the kingdom of heaven okay but the faith we carry that our spirit all right the faith we carry in our spirit that's what's inherited immortality you see and that's something that people didn't understand back then because they were so busy thinking about uh uh yahweh shai restoring the kingdom at that time not understanding that through their faith, even after death, they would come back into this life, the reincarnation, which is a thing in the scriptures, okay, into a different body. And they would act out the will of the Most High on the right hand side, okay, and, and inherit those godly bodies afterward at the end. You know, it says, but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living power who is the savior of all men especially of those that believe these things command and teach you see, this is uh, Wisdom of Psalm in chapter 11. And um, let me go down here. <clears throat> and it says, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 11, verse 21. For thou can show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt. So if he wanted to, he can make you to live out. 200 300 you know 500 800 years if the most high wanted he can make you out to live that you know his will goes you see it says um for thou can show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt and who may withstand the power of thine arm you know so who's going to say, no, 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 you you want him to live 200? I'm going to have him live 20. You know, no one. You see, you've heard freak stories where people have fallen now, you know, 20 story building and, and lived. OK, and that's the will of the most high being enacted. You see, like how I said that will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. You see. It says, uh, verse 22, for the whole world before thee is as a little grain of the balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things and winkest at the sins of men because they should amend. 
for thou lovest all things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made, for never wouldest thou have made it anything if thou hadst hated it. You see? It says, and how could anything have endured? You see? And that's the point. How could anything have endured if it had not been thy will or been preserved if not called by thee? So if the Most High is able to preserve, you know, and these are things that happen even in the, the times of, of Moses, all right, leaving Egypt, okay? Even in that time, you had uh, um, the Israelites, okay, that didn't want to hearken unto those words. You know, the Most High was showing great signs and great wonders, just like he's doing now, okay? And yet the Israelites said, oh, did he bring us out here to kill us? You know, just because they were thirsty, the Most High would have made it rain pure water. You know, the Most High could have made it rain pure water to where you stick out your tongue and it fills you up for days, man. That's the kind of power that we serve, the king of the universe. You see? Think about that. The king of the universe is who we serve that could have enacted his his will, all right, to, to touch your tongue with a little bit of water that would fill you up for, for three days. You know? That's the power that we serve, man. You know, the power that's able to feed you and you'll be good for one whole month. You know? And something small like living 130 years, you know, even even as wicked as, as a person could have been, even as a, a unhealthy as a person could have been, the most high, the most high's will trumps over everything else, man. You know, so in these times of trouble that we're approaching, the most high is going to keep you balanced. OK, the most high is going to keep you uh, in his mind, you know, to keep you safe. You see, and those are important things to, to, to think about. You know, you, you worry about your family and your children and, and things of that nature, man. But if you're really worried, you would follow after Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know, because he has the power to not just save you. He can save your children. He can save your family. You know, he can even save other families through you. You see? So the will of the Most High is a very, very, very powerful, ultimate, unstoppable, and unmovable force. You know? Like I made mention in camp, if he wanted to, he could have came down and he could have dragged your ass out of bed and, and made you a prophet himself. You know, he could have made a rock a prophet. You see? Who can but prophesy like Scripture says? You know? So again... Wisdom of Solomon 11 and 25. And how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will or been preserved if not called by thee? You see, and that's why we believe in this Bible, man. That's why we believe in the scriptures because it was preserved for years, you know? And you have a lot of naysayers that say, well, you know, how, how is it possible that from the beginning of time, you know, somebody knew it and, and eventually got to that, that point, you know? But that's just the will of the Most High. You see, how much more us, you know, Yahweh Shai made a parable about that, that bird, how the birds are fed, you know, how much more us, his elect, you know, the ones he takes care of, that he says he takes care of, not because it's us, but because it's him, he takes care of us, you know, because he promised it to us, you see, so I hope that was edifying, just wanted to get a quick hit, you know, so with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh Shai. Shalom.